Hi class, welcome to our lesson on writing for broadcast, which is a review of chapter three in Sound Reporting, the NPR Guide to Audio Journalism and Production. So writing for broadcast, if you were to read a print article out loud, something out of a newspaper or a magazine, you might find that it would sound a little bit hard to follow or a little bit not comfortable to listen to. And at the same time, if you were to take a script that was written for broadcast and you read it to yourself, it might seem a little bit too simplistic. So one main thing that you're going to work on as you write your news stories for broadcast, for spoken broadcast, is, is that you want to write simply enough that the audience can follow along and pick up the information you're trying to deliver. So... One main idea of this whole lesson is write the way you should speak. Now, that might not be the right the way you speak if you're, say, with your friends and you're using more slang-type vernacular, but imagine the way you would speak in your most ideal sense. Now, we mentioned this in a prior lesson, but when you are doing a broadcast on the radio or on a podcast or in that audio arena, act like you're talking to one person at a time. You can even envision maybe a person that you're talking to as you're doing the recording. In fact, I'm doing that now. Also, you want to speak your sentences before you write them down into your script, and definitely after you've written them down. So you're always reading things out loud before you go and put them into writing. You never want to just write down your script all the way through and then read it, because you won't know exactly how it's going to sound until you've tested that out. You don't want to use overly flowery words, complicated words. You know, some people used to do a thing where they'd memorize a really difficult SAT vocabulary word and then try to work that into their regular conversations. You wouldn't use um, words other than the common words you might use in the typical course of a conversation. Also, unlike in scripts written where you're developing, say, a movie screenplay, you want to use the present participles. So like if you're doing a story on the first day of classes, you would say students are walking to class. Uh, people are, are eating in the dining hall. So uh, what you also want to do is you want to introduce who is saying what first. So if you got a quote from the governor, you would make sure to say, we talked to the governor of the state, here's what he said. And then you would he maybe hear the quote or hear the reporter read a summary of that quote. But you don't want to do what they do in the newspaper, which is where you'd see a long quote and then it would say, says Professor Lipscomb. That's what you wouldn't want to do. You want to make sure to state what's coming up when you do your reading of the script. And another thing, you want to keep basic sentence structure. So you don't want to, there to be too many extra clauses and extra words that tend to complicate the way you have to speak your script. What are some tips? You want to avoid general pronouncements. People in Greensboro love the cold weather. Things like that. You want to attach ideas to an actual person. Have you ever seen an interview where somebody says to maybe a political candidate, well, people are saying you're not trustable. Who is saying that? Uh, attach these types of general statements and of perspective to an actual person or place. You wanted to uh, avoid complicated titles. There was somebody who spoke to us over the weekend that had this big, long title related to a grant project that he was working on. And you simply, if I was telling you that he had come to speak at Bennett College, I would identify him as a faculty member over at the college that he worked, on, worked at. Be very careful about using people's titles that are so confusing you can't tell exactly who they're aligned with or what they do. Use short sentences. Use an active voice. An active voice means the, um, let's say this, letters are being delivered. Instead, you would want to say, the postal workers are delivering letters. So you want to, don't use sentences where you don't have a subject that drives the action of the sentence. You want to make sure to avoid hypothetical questions as a way to introduce introducing your subject. Will there ever be any relief 
to the taxes that American people face, something like that. You want to avoid starting a story with that kind of lead. Be deliberate in your statements, and you want to speak visually. So you want to imagine, see these things that you're talking about, and you want to be able to describe them in a way that the people in the audience can visualize them as well. You want to prepare for tough-sounding words, maybe foreign words or a complicated name. But in, in a lot of people even write those out like they sound, so when they read them, it will sound like they wanted to say them. But you have to prepare ahead of time when you're preparing scripts for those, those kind of tough words to come up. You want to be original. You don't want to repeat phrases or ideas that other people have thought of before. You want to rewrite awkward phrases. You want to avoid repeating words. Um, if you said, a lot of the workers at such and such factory are working from sunup to sundown on the new initiative. You don't want to use that same work, that same word throughout your sentence. You want to be as efficient as possible in your writing. You want to avoid cliches, things that people have said over and over again. Avoid jargon. Jargon is words specific to a company. So let's say you were interviewing somebody that worked at a uh, technology firm. You wouldn't want to use words that only the technology people know what they are. You want to use words that are common and under understandable to your audience. Avoid using too many names and numbers. You have to simplify that for your audience. Watch out for unusual speak speech patterns. Maybe rhymes that develop or words... Um, words that could be awkward when they when they're uh, sound next to each other, so you don't you want to go back and rework those sentences that have, say, tongue twisters in them or things that don't sound right, and correct for grammatical errors, and for typos, especially so you don't let those that will cost you credibility if you let your reading news go through with a lot of grammatical errors. Those are some tips, and feel free to go back and look at this list as you develop your script to be read.